From demon infestations to the cold depths of space, Japanese anime has the uncanny ability to capture fear and uncertainty like few other animated films can, and these are the must-see horror movies that'll shock you to your core. Cat Soup is an animated short film by Tatsuo Sato, supplying a surreal, trippy tale about grief and the deep bond between siblings. Represented by anthropomorphic cats, Niata is a young male cat who loves his sick older sister, Niako. One day, while playing in the bath, Niata accidentally drowns, and while wandering between life and death, he sees Niako walking with Jizuo, the patron saint of dead children. After a game of tug of war, they split Niako's soul in half. When Niata is revived, he gives Niako her soul back, but it is incomplete, so they must embark on a journey through hell to make her whole again. The gorgeous animation makes Cat Soup a contemplative sensory experience. What little dialogue there is doesn't do much to guide the viewer through the story. Instead, it's up to the viewer to actively engage with the journey alongside these two cats. But don't let that whimsical aesthetic fool you. Cat Soup is full of jarring imagery and violence, all the more shocking when it happens to animated cats. Yoshiaki Kawajiri made his solo directorial debut with 1987's Wicked City. The humans of Earth have struck a tenuous peace treaty with the demon realm, known as the Black World, to maintain some semblance of order. The Black Guard, a special police force made up of humans and demons, ensures that this treaty is upheld. But with the treaty about to expire, Black Guard agents, the human Taki and the demon Makie, must protect the diplomat charged with its renewal. However, a radical group of demons don't want that to happen, and Taki and Makie must use their combined abilities to protect humanity from complete destruction. Two of you are perfectly suited genetically to create babies that'll have both the ability and the responsibility of creating a new world. Kawajiri shows off his grotesque style and eye for shocking violence with Wicked City, establishing himself as an anime director with no qualms about breaking taboos. With the body merely a ball of clay for the animators to play with, viewers should beware that Wicked City is hypersexual, hyperviolent, and isn't for the faint of heart. But if you could handle extreme horror, the movie is worth seeking out. Of the two existing Vampire Hunter D films, the 1985 movie is sadly often overshadowed by the one released in 2000. But there's a lot of value to Vampire Hunter D, including some gnarly monsters and death sequences. The Vampire Hunter, simply called D, himself a half-human, half-vampire hybrid known as a Dampier, wanders a post-nuclear landscape where vampire nobility, demons, and mutants rule the land. He's hired by Doris Lang to save her from Count Lee, a powerful vampire noble who wants to make her his new blood-sucking bride. While Dee takes on the assignment to save Doris, he must face a legion of monsters, each more powerful than the last. All the while, Dee has a parasite embedded in his left hand, manifesting as a human face who keeps telling Dee to drink human blood. Vampire Hunter D was marketed as a dark future science fiction romance, and while there are moments of extreme gore, much of the film moves at a slow pace, focusing a lot on building the world's lore. That lore isn't always clear, but the film is still a visual feast for any gore hound. Directed by Yoshiaki Kawajiri, the 1995 film Biohunter takes place in a world where a malady called the Demon Virus is ravaging Japan. Those infected with the virus transform into horrific creatures with a taste for human flesh. In this hellscape, there are two men determined to stop the virus. Koshigaya and Kamada are two molecular biologists slash demon hunters who are trying to develop a cure and hunt down the infected. However, their journey takes a turn for the worse when Kamada contracts the virus. He uses the disease to his advantage, trying to keep his demonic side under control so that he can save as many lives as possible. There's a reason that Biohunter is far from the last Kawajiri film on this list. The prolific director's transgressive works push the limits of animation. Teeth burst from flesh, bodies twist and mutate, and any semblance of humanity is stripped away. This hypersexual, hyperviolent horror anime proves that not all animated films are meant for children. Memories is a 1995 sci fi anthology film from the mind of Katsuhiro Otomo, creator of the manga series and the 1988 film Akira. But this isn't just Otomo's project. The first story, Magnetic Rose, is directed by Koji Muramoto and written by Satoshi Kon. It follows two engineers who discover an abandoned spaceship full of decadent furnishings, and they slowly unravel the mystery at the vessel's core. Next, there's Stink Bomb, directed by Tensai Okamura and written by Otomo, which is about a man who takes the wrong pill and gives himself toxic farts. Yes, there is quite the tonal shift between stories. 
Finally, there's Cannon Fodder, written and directed by Otomo, about a young boy who dreams of becoming a military officer, firing cannons against a seemingly non-existent enemy. These three unrelated films come together to create three very different imaginings of the future, and yet are united by gorgeous animation and thoughtful writing. These tales are psychological and haunting, focusing more on the cerebral experience of terror than visceral violence. In 1988, Yoshiaki Kawajiri gave the world another taste of his demon-obsessed style with Demon City Shinjuku. While not Kawajiri's most famous film on this list, Demon City Shinjuku is an underrated gem that pumps the brakes on the gore and sexuality. But don't worry, there are still plenty of creatures to unnerve you. Demon City Shinjuku follows the young man Kyoya on his typical hero's journey, prowling a city full of demons while seeking revenge against the psychic Rebi Ra, the man who killed his father. But as Kyoya tries to unlock the full potential of his powers, he's running out of time to master his abilities and save the universe. Along the way, the world president is bound to a giant crucifix by a supernatural plant intended to be a sacrifice to bring even more chaos to the world. Like all of Kawajiri's work, Demon City Shinjuku is chock full of gorgeously choreographed action sequences that make up for its uneven pacing. Yan Sang Ho's 2016 animated film Soul Station is the official prequel to the Korean hit zombie film Train to Busan, taking place at the start of the zombie pandemic. Hai Sun is a sex worker living with her deadbeat boyfriend Ki Woo, stuck in a vicious cycle of trauma and abuse. After an explosive argument at the titular Soul Station, the two are separated by zombies. Meanwhile, Hai Sun's father, Sok Ju, is searching the city for his estranged daughter and manages to cross paths with Ki Woon. Soul Station uses the classic narrative structure of two groups splitting up during a zombie attack, but it doesn't feel as tired as it could be due to the gorgeous animation and the political commentary surrounding Korea's treatment of its homeless population. Squatters are among the first victims of the virus, never taken seriously by authority figures and regarded as unimportant by most of society. While zombies may be overdone by this point, Soul Station provides a breath of fresh air to a well-worn genre. With his 2000 film Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust, Yoshiaki Kawajiri revived the cinematic legacy of the eponymous Dampier Hunter. Here, D is hired after a young woman named Charlotte is abducted from her home by Baron Meyer Link, a vampire nobleman. Charlotte's father pays D to find Charlotte and bring her back unscathed. However, D has competition, as Charlotte's brother has hired the Marcus Brothers, a band of famous hunters, to get the job done. But nothing is what it seems, as it's revealed that Charlotte is actually in love with her vampire captor. I wanted you to be happy, Meyer, and so I abandoned my father and my brother for you. Kawajiri's Vampire Hunter D is more highly regarded than the 1985 film due to its improved pacing, action sequences, and animation style. The movie has been touted as one of the better vampire films, striking a balance between gory action and character-driven moments that keep the viewer invested. Satoshi Kon's feature film debut as a director came in 1997 with the horrifying psychological thriller Perfect Blue. This film about the effects of fame and obsession is based on the novel of the same name by Yoshikazu Takeyoshi and follows Mima Kirigoye. When Mima decides to move on from being the lead singer of the girl idol group Cham to pursue a career in acting, her fans are thrown into an uproar as Mima tries to cope with the backlash, both online and offline, as well as make her way through the sleazy world of television acting, a stalker nicknamed Mimania starts killing key individuals around her. Between trying to maintain her public persona as an actress while needing to process her trauma, Mima starts losing her grip on reality. She begins blacking out and can't remember where she was during the murders, possibly marking her as a prime suspect in the killings. As a result, her own concept of identity begins to slip away. Perfect Blue inspired movies like Darren Aronofsky's Black Swan and provided a framework for examining obsession and their lasting psychological effects in the modern age. Perfect Blue isn't just about stalking, but about how your sense of self disappears when you step into the public eye. Ninja Scroll is often considered Yoshiaki Kawajiri's most influential work and is cited as one of the films that brought adult-oriented anime into the West. Released in 1993, Kawajiri pivots from futuristic demonic hellscapes to feudal Japan. Though there are still demons, eight powerful ones called the Devils of Kemon, who want to overthrow the government, wandering swordsman for hire Jubei is offered a large sum of money to learn more about these devils and to uncover their motivations. Along the way, he pairs up with the female ninja Kagaro, the sole survivor of her clan. The two work together and maybe fall in love while saving the world from whatever dangerous plot lurks under the surface. 
The action sequences in Ninja Scroll are lush and kinetic, providing the audience with a visual feast. And, much like the rest of Kawajiri's work, the movie is packed with as much shocking sex and violence as possible. Satoshi Kon's 2006 feature film Paprika was his last before he died in 2010. The film is a psychedelic journey through dreams that addresses the terrifying malleability of the human mind. What did my dreams reveal about me? <laughs> that you're impatient. <laughs> Dr. Atsuko Chiba uses a device called the DC Mini to access the dreams of her psychiatric patients. By assuming her dream persona, Paprika, Chiba enters people's dreams to better analyze their subconscious. But, of course, such power is easily abused. When scientists with evil intentions steal the device and infiltrate unsuspecting minds, they start manipulating people into killing themselves. Chiba dives into the dream world to try and keep it all from oozing into the real world. No written description can truly capture the jaw-dropping beauty of the film's animation, nor its reliance on dream logic. With Paprika, Khan's swan song is something truly special. Eiichi Yamamoto's 1973 film Belladonna of Sadness is a heart-wrenching masterpiece about a scorned woman who yearns for any type of control. In medieval France, Jeanne and Jeanne are basking in the glow of their new marriage, but it's sadly short-lived when Jeanne is assaulted by a baron in a ritual ceremony. Despite it being considered a tradition, Jean can't handle the reality of it and abandons Jen. In her despair, Jen is offered powers by a phallic demon who guarantees revenge on those who have wronged her. What ensues is a never-ending struggle for Jen to regain her bodily autonomy, but her status as a woman continually damns her to a life of torture. Jen's body undergoes several transformations as she tries repeatedly to become a more powerful being. Belladonna of Sadness is an agonizing but strangely alluring experience, thanks to the film's psychedelic animation representing violence against women in the abstract, instead of an excruciating realistic detail. 